something has to happen soon if it has to be his pontificate. Otherwise, we're in the dark of who's next to be the Pope and what's to come. That's where I would like some clarification if with your research, maybe. But did you not say in one of those recent interviews it was around about the eighteen seventies that Marie Julie Jeheni spoke about the fall of the English Queen? Yes. It was a long time before her uncle abdicated. Her father took on, and then she be. She, her father was never born to be king. She was never born to be queen. It was the abdication decades later that made that possible. And she, mm -hmm. she she's the longest reigning queen. Queen Victoria was the longest, but Queen Elizabeth II was the longest reigning queen ever in the UK. And she dies precisely in the time frame of everything prophesied and what's now happening regarding Iran, plus everything else. You can't make that up. No. But I'm still a little bit in the dark of, right, if it's possible that the miracle is April, which means the warning is beforehand, what needs to happen to give that spark? Right, warfare is one thing. But what about the civil unrests? What about whatever's to occur in England and France and Europe? What's the spark for people turning on people? You know, I, I still think it might be to do with hitting Iran or something like that that would make the Muslim nations rise. And with these millions of migrant men especially coming into this country wanting their way, then... Am I right to think that's what could set it off? Or I mean, I, I don't. I'm in the dark about it. What could possibly happen so quickly in the next few months, or even indeed the few years, when whenever it may be? I'm still. Well, we know, according to Marie Julie Jani, that the beginning of those riots uh, of immigrants, at least in France, she was referring to, would start in June and would continue in July of a particular year. Uh, I think. I'm not surprised at all today. We, I mean, I've seen it here uh, on French TV, uh, a report, uh, a show they did uh, of English um, Muslim police that uh, exist in some of uh, your big cities' uh, avenues, and they have uh, patrols with a certain sort of uniform, a vest of Muslims who make sure that no women go without a jihab or uh, with uh, short skirts. We have uh, in France some things uh, as drastic as that, uh, in particularly in the region of Saint-Denis and north of Paris, Marseille, Strasbourg, and all the big cities of France. This, sit this prophecy is already taking place today. The next thing that will take place will be when there will be um, a political alliance on the left wing of the political spectrum with neo-Muslim forces and organizations to try to revolt against the local uh, uh, forces of authority. In France will be the 30s of the French Republic. In England, the kingdom, no? the, the rules of, of, of the country, Scotland, same, Germany, they're completely overtaken by large uh, populations that are Turkish or of Turkish origins. In Spain, it's principally the Moroccans and Northern Africans. Italy, the same from all over, because it's principally the door of Europe for all of the immigrants from the Middle East and from Africa. In France, all the old colonies, the old empire, after chasing the French from their country, are coming over to our place. And not because they love France. They do not. They come to France for um, economic and financial opportunities. And to become a Frenchman, I submit to you, Mark, to become an Englishman or a Scotsman, uh, even if you are Arab or if you are from India or Pakistan or from wherever you come from, to become an Englishman, you would have to love the English culture. You would have to adopt it for yourself. The history of England would have to become the history of those newcomers. Um, the same for the Scots, the same for the French. If you are an Algerian and come to France and want to become a Frenchman, you would have to learn and to love the history of France, to embrace the, fa the fact that Charles Martel, King Charles Martel, fought and pushed back the Muslim invasion in the Battle of Poitiers. Many times I've asked to some so-called Frenchmen that were from the old French colonies, well, let me ask you, my friend, you call yourself a Frenchman. 
Well, if you would have lived in the time of King Charles Martel and the uh, Saracens would have come in the battle in Poitiers and would have fought, you would have to choose a camp, either the Arabs of Poitiers that came from Northern Africa and from Spain, or would you have joined the forces of King Charles Martel to push them back? Or which side would you have fought? He refused to answer. Now, forgive me, that's not a Frenchman. A Frenchman, you choose your country whether you're right or whether you are wrong. It's a question of love, of adopting the French or your national heroes for your own. The cultures, the way of doing things, you adopt the ones that you use to, uh, to adopt. You adopt the one of your hosting country if you, if you want to become a countryman of that particular hosting nation. You do not try to bring your own culture and try to force it upon those who have lived there for years. You told me about this lady who lived there for 40 years. I've known people who told me the same thing in France. My answer was, well, I've lived in France for 2,000 years. That gives me a right that to say who is allowed to come in my house and who, who doesn't have the right to come to my house. Mm -hmm. In the case of France, France is called the French, the, the Catholic Church's eldest daughter. I think with the prodigal <laughs> daughter of the Catholic Church. But uh, the situation is serious. We are losing our identity, national identity, which has been built for two millennia. I do not think for one moment that my uncle Jean Eral, who was a free French officer, or my grandfather, who was a poilu of uh, the First World War, put on the uniform of his father before on the Franco-Prussian War, and so on and so forth. I don't believe that our fathers have worn the uniform to protect the fatherland, the country, the motherland of France, or in your case, Scotland or England, so that we, our identity, our values, our history be forgotten and replaced by a barbaric, intolerant new faith. I do not believe that for one moment. Mm -hmm. It's speeding on their memory than to allow this change to take place. I don't know. I'm not so familiar about England's politics. In France, there is a political movement uh, right wing, but not neo fascist at all. It's uh, very much like a Gaullist uh, party. There is Marine Le Pen, there is Eric Zemmour. I know Marine Le Pen is more known in England, but um, they uh, tend to um, want to bring forth um, a rule of assimilation. In other words, people can come from the four corners of the world and want to become French, yes, but they have to assimilate. Uh, first of all, knowing how to speak the language, knowing our history, embracing it. No? Um, religion can, can be various in France. We have a lot of Muslims, we have uh, Jews, we have Catholics, Christians, Protestants of all sorts. Uh, but it is imperative, at this, according to these particular norms, to be discreet with our faith, not to impose your faith on others. And as you can go to the temple, you can go to... Um, the Catholic Church, you can go wherever you want to go to adore your God. But when you're in the street, you cannot impose your faith. You cannot show any sign that would bring uh, your faith openly into plain view. That's what we call the law of laicity, which, by the way, was put forth first by our Lord Jesus Christ. When he told uh, about the coin, uh, the cester that uh, he was presented, whose face is this, is that of Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Mm -hmm. It's politics. Uh, but politics in this instance is very much correlated with faith, particularly if we are to read in detail uh, the book um, of the, and the prophecies brought forth by Marie Jolie-Jeanie. Mm -hmm. So according to her, according to the prophecies and the messages she received from our Lord, from the Blessed Virgin Mary, from St. Michael the Archangel, this immigration um, and population replacement that is little by little taking place will not be blessed by God. It will be hostile, and it will try to replace one faith with another that is not Christian, that is anti-Christian. It's Mahometan. And they represent a danger, because in their way of thinking, we are the infidels. And as such, if you're a good Muslim, you must follow the Quran. And the Quran calls the Christians the infidels. Um... I'll finish with one last anecdote. Shortly before I left France, there was one pivotal point that 
For me, it was the drop of water that made the vase overflow. I remember walking in the Champs Elysees, Mark, in front of that Lac de Triomphe. And I was walking with friends, and we saw a dozen of young adolescents. The oldest probably was 18, 19 years old. The youngest, maybe 15, 14, 15 years old. There were a group of about 20 young Muslims. And they all were wearing the same, the same T-shirt, a green T-shirt. And in the front, you could see a map of France, no? Uh, with a chador, with a covering her and uh, the regular veil. And it said uh, in French, la France, France, the uh, traditional enemy of Islam. If you cannot conquer it, convert it. And in the back of the, of the T-shirt, there were two Muslim sabers that, same, that said, stated the same thing in, uh, in Arabic. I saw that. Nobody, everybody was watching and continuing walking. This was a blooming provocation mm -hmm. in France. If you cannot conquer it, convert it. A traditional enemy of Islam, France, the hosting nation of these people, after they chase us from the colonies, they, they come here and they tell us this? this is, do you think for one moment that's what my father, my uncle, or my grandfather fought for, or yours? It is a scandal. It is a scandal. That is why um, I look forward for these prophecies to become a reality, for a new angelic, quote-unquote, angelic pope to be placed again on the seat of Peter, as he was announced as so by, or rather, through Marie-Julie Jenny. And I'm looking forward for nations like ours who have contributed to the faith, England included, definitely Scotland, France, Spain, all those nations that have defended the faith, defended the church, echoed and propagated throughout the entire world the Gospels. I look forward for the, this grand monarch to come back to Europe to chase the, the pagans away from our country, from the soul of our ancestors, and to place again back uh, on the pit of on the seat of Peter, that announced, that promised pontiff uh, who will be angelic and will restitute the uh, norms, the faith, the um, dogma that were celebrated by our fathers and theirs before them. Forgive me, I don't mean to be theatrical or to be too long-winded, but it comes truly from the heart. Oh yeah, we can sense that for sure. It's just one thing I've learned in life recent years is I've matured a little bit more. I'm only 38. I've had a hard life. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> not, not to um, judge all because of the few. And um, I think for a long time, especially since 9-11 and the way the world was led into believing the lies uh, of the wars and all this stuff, you know, um, in the Middle East, the West getting over and all that with the wars, there was a real sense of divide more than ever in our own countries, you know, between those of who are Scottish or English, white, Christian or atheist, and then those who are, you know, Middle Eastern, Asian, Muslim. And there was a great big divide, but at the same time in the land as these wars went on, Diversity and inclusion has been the, the focal point, really, in society. And uh, I've again, I prefer it when I speak to real Muslims or real people from wherever. You know, again, I speak to a friend who's Lithuanian. Uh, what is it really that bad about Russia as it is in the news? W what's the country? Where are you at? What's the history? What, where does your family feel? Or, and thing, what all that? I'd I like to get to the core. Uh, to understand it better, uh, and uh, every uh, every conversation I've had in recent months with that lady, uh, to another few men and others I've spoken to, even inside the mosque, I was working there. I wasn't there praying. Don't worry, I'm still Catholic. But uh, one thing they all said, he says, it's the media, it's the West, it's the propaganda that's causing the division. Real Muslims would never kill someone else. 
these terrorists are terrorists. They are not Muslim. That's what these Muslim men and women have said to me in the comfort of their own home and a one-to-one -one conversation, different times, just speaking freely of our own faiths. And um, I'd like to think there's some truth in that. And I know some people get put off Medjugorje with the story I went about uh, years and years ago about how Our Lady answered the children's questions about who had the strongest faith or something like that in the village. And uh, she named the girl, it was a Muslim girl. And it's something God doesn't judge by religion, but by faith. I'm getting it mixed up, so don't quote me on it. But I remember the story being told to me way back in the beginning of my journey with Medjugorje, a good 18 years ago. And that, I know, kind of makes people wonder. But it reminds me of Isaiah. You know, God's ways are above our ways, just as the heavens are above the skies. Where is the mm -hmm. heaven? If it's above the sky, you know, it's immeasurable, it's it's infinite. So God's ways are above our ways. But it, in a way of hope then, bringing all that together, because Archbishop Fulton Sheen, I think it was, is on record, again being quoted, uh, that Our Lady has the Muslims where she wants them for now. Because when all these things start taking place, the events where Satan's power is gone, as she's told us, and then the new era, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, which is the the main conclusion. The devil's time's running out. He's taking all the toys out the pram. He knows it. He's not getting stronger when you see these things. He's getting weaker. God mm -hmm. is ready to go. He's gone, and he's using Our Lady to do it. But Fatima was the most beloved daughter of Muhammad. <laughs> yes. That's why she's appeared there. And is it Maria Esperanza? good friends of John Paul II, she was known as the Padre Pio of South America or something, she says it won't just be Garib and Dal and Medjugorje but all these shrines will show the great permanent sign and all that which includes Fatima so I, I think in a turnaround way with illumination of conscience with all these permanent signs and miracles and something's going to give of the new Pentecost that's bringing people back to the one true holy Catholic and apostolic church. And that's where we do our part, but God is doing it all. He is the master of all, and that's what's coming. And then that note as well, for all these things, I say it was a nail-biting year 2024 as it comes and everything recovered. I sent you the message when news went out about January, the first New Year's Day in Medjugorje. Our Lady made a very unique request for everyone to go to Apparition Hill for New Year's Day, praying in the pouring rain for hours before the apparition with Maria. Now, I don't know if you watched it or not, but the thing that stood out with me and as my father also said, it reminded me straight away of Fatima. They were in the drenching rain waiting for the great miracle on October 13th. This, they were all up the hill in the pouring rain for hours, and then in the last few prayers of that decade of the rosary, the rain stopped. Maria says a few words of prayer and halfway through their father, she goes into her ecstasy with the apparition, which I thought was brilliant, just these little things. But it was also promised a gift by Our Lady. And of course, a lot of people, I say in the video, don't get carried away with your thoughts and excitement and making hysteria. But the message was very clear as you won't regret this, neither you nor your children or your children's children. And it's like, well, what's contained in that? Is that part of the gift? Because I noticed how much Maria was just looking and listening. Our Lady did a lot of the talking, a lot of the praying. I don't know if you got to watch it or if you've heard more about it or what did you pick up yourself from that? Because I thought it was... It was very poignant to begin the new year in such a special way, which she doesn't do every year. Exactly. No, I, I watched and I was also touched as you, and I found it quite remarkable, the coincidence between this request and Father Michel Rodrigue, who, by the way, received also a message mm -hmm. uh, for the public on uh, January the 1st on the same day. But this message will be released um, on, is to be released and be sometimes between uh, mid February and the end of February. Um, so it's not uh, apocalyptic, it's not harsh. It's harsh in some ways, but you will see. I hope you, you'll be ever so kind to invite me again and we'll cover this, uh, this message together.
But all in all, uh, regarding Medjugorje and what you were talking about, uh, about this particular message that really triggered an antipathy against uh, the apparition case was a statement that the Virgin May stated that there would be some non-Christians that would reach heaven before some Catholics. No? And, uh, and it is true, although in the same message, the Virgin Mary stated clearly that the Catholic Church is the one true faith instituted by her son. But a lot of traditionalist Catholics stated you can only earn salvation through the faith of the Catholic Church, which is what has been taught for many centuries. That being said, I found on a personal level no issue on this particular part of the message of the Virgin Mary. And for those traditionalists who disagree with me, I'd like to bring to their attention that my family was for Monsignor Lefebvre on the first hours. When he start, when the whole thing started in the 80s. So as far as um, me being accused of not being a traditionalist, not supporting uh, the Tridentine Mass and that sort of thing, I don't have any lessons to take from anyone because we are not one of the last hours. We were traditionalists of the first hours. Um, but we decided to remain faithful to the Catholic Church and not to come out of, uh, of the ship. But that being said, I have no issues or contradict conflict with my faith in the idea that non-Catholics could earn heaven before some Catholics. We can see today some Catholics in Rome that I do not believe will reach heaven before some good non-Christians. We, we don't have to look very far, do we? That being said, let us remember as well that the very first human being to have ever entered paradise, um, even before the Virgin Mary, even before St. Joseph, was not even Christian. He was the plus the worst criminal by his own admission. And he entered heaven first. He was the man who was crucified on Christ's right. But the very last minute said, Jesus, remember me before you enter your kingdom. He didn't say before you enter heaven. So he was not Christian. He was not sure. He was not believing. He simply saw a man that was good. And he in Christ promised him, in truth, in truth, today you will be with me in paradise. So I found no in the charity of God. I found no conflict in that. There are, as you said a few moments ago, Muslims, Israelis, Jews that are admirable. Yes. And I do believe they will have a chance uh, either at the moment of their death or just immediately thereafter to know the truth and to make the right choice. Like uh, the man who died on Christ's right hand on the cross. Worst of man, a criminal by his own admission. So, however, I've been to Medjugorje, I've seen with my own eyes, and I've seen extraordinary things with a critical eye at first. When you see, Mark, endless lines of faithful waiting from the wee hours of the morning until the, until the evening, waiting for a monk, for a priest, a Franciscan friar, to hear you in confession. And thereafter, after having spent the entire day waiting under the sun or under the, uh, or under the rain, spending the entire night on your knees in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament exposed in St. James Church, I would defy any of those detractors to keep your eyes dry. It's absolutely extraordinary. And if indeed all this is inspired by the enemy, by the devil, then I submit to you what I said to Doug Berry the other night and to Christine Bacon yes, uh, the day before yesterday. Then I would submit to you that the devil has suicidal tendencies because this is exactly what he doesn't want. Mm. Now, division within the Catholic Church is exactly what the enemy of God wants, an implosion. They want, with all the mediocrity, with all the scandals that are taking place right now in Rome, with all this rubbish that is being declared, these contradictions, he only wants one thing, to people to be inspired, uh, to disgust, to, because of the scandal that is taking place, and to leave ship, to leave the Catholic Church. That is a trap, under no circumstance. Do not leave the Catholic Church. Do not leave the Church that was founded by Christ. These men are poor victims that are falling under falsehood. Now, we must pray for for their forgiveness and for so that God may illuminate them and lead them back to the straight path. 
but under no circumstances are we to leave the Catholic Church, despite of all the errors that are being pronounced, be, despite of the idolatry that took place with the Pachamama bit, despite of her Verita, um, Amoris Latitia, despite of this, uh, this declaration, which with such good taste was published just before Christmas. Brilliant, extremely elegant, lovely taste. Well done. Are you kidding me? Mm. It's a blooming scandal, I agree. But the enemy wants you to leave the church and to go maybe join something else similar. No, that's exactly what the trap is set for, for people to be dismayed, to people to be scandalized and discouraged and to want to leave what they consider is no longer a church or a church of mediocrity. Again, Rome does not is not all of the Roman Catholic Church. We are the mystical body of Christ. We are the Catholic Church. We hold and defend the true faith. Amen. I know we're going to wrap it up shortly, Xavier, but just in that note, because when Aye. more things come to mind, then I forget. <laughs> sure. Between now and that Christmas, then, let's forget about what's going on in the world. We already know and we've covered it. But I, sometimes I wonder myself, like, I, I've I've never had the chance or the opportunity where I lived growing up to know about traditional Latin masses and all that. Uh, I'm a bit more closer to where I live just now and again being Epiphany Day, the feast day I went and got the Epiphany water, the blessed salts, the chalks, all that stuff I to, and especially with watching Father Ripperger videos the last couple of years I've uh, really educated myself a lot there on top of what I may have known already um, for spiritual warfare and everything like that so I don't speak from a traditional Latin mass defender or anything although Pope Francis is speaking all these wonderful diversities in the church. It doesn't seem to include the the TLM called the traditional Latin Mass. So there's a bit of exclusion there from my viewpoint. So for someone that's not part of that, I kind of see the way they are being tarnished and bullied and focused when all this nonsense is happening. If next Christmas isn't going to be the way you expect it to be and you've made an exception to this Christmas, if I had to apply that just to the faith side, then I could see next Christmas, for me, going towards that more traditional sense. Not because I'm attracted to the smells and bells and all the things that seems to be the, the, the focus, but I think it's the hardcore of the people who are living the faith we want to keep the solid tradition and magisterial teachings of the faith with little to no confusion of that teaching. And that's where we're going to start going. We're going to start finding it there. Because with all this nonsense that's coming left, right and centre, how do we get away from that and focus on the truth? What is the truth? Pontius Pilate asking Jesus, what is truth? Jesus is the truth. And where is his teaching where is the solid, and I think that's where it's going, coming from a, an observation, not being a part of it. But if priests start doing these blessings, if priests and bishops start doing the new liturgy or the new Eucharistic thing, and we know all along well, this is the stuff that heaven's told us to avoid, then you're gone. I'm off. And I think that's where I'll go underground. That's where I'll be asking the French, is that king over there yet? I need a job. <laughs> well, speaking of that note as well, some people have asked, well, if he's a for if he's living in a foreign land, could it be exactly? It is, uh, <laughs> actually. <are> <laughs> Excuse me. I know there's two things there at once, but before I forget. No, no, it's perfect. <laughs> it's very appropriate, in fact. I think that, uh, well, with the... Uh, I tend to like to prefer to prefer the Tridentine Mass. Uh, I do not believe I believe that the Novus Ordo Mass is valid. Whenever a priest consecrate the host in the Novus Ordo, yes, it becomes the body and blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the angular stone, the, and also the Gospels. Together they form one. The influence of history. I invite everyone to read. Uh, the book written by Father Murr, A Murder on the 33rd Degree. It explains who was before, who was uh, behind uh, the new liturgy that was set on Vatican II. But Vatican II 
uh, and for all those um, um, uh, pro-Vatican II uh, defenders who do not know, Vatican II never ordered the abolition of the Tridentine Mass. It complemented it. It added it. Vatican II permitted fully the continuation of the Mass in the Roman Rite. All these would say otherwise are, telling, are either ignorant or are telling you a lie. I personally prefer the Tridentine Mass, although I go often to Novus Ordo Mass. My son is an altar boy, no? who dresses the traditional way in the Novus Ordo Mass, with, in red, white, and he per performs sp splendidly. But I prefer the Tridentine Mass because, for various reasons. First, for, first of all, uh, it gives more honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ for the sacrament of the altar. First, the priest doesn't face the people, he faces the altar of Christ, number one. Second of all, we receive in Tridentine Mass the body and soul and the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ on our knees in humility. And I assure you, it costs you. And we receive it directly in the mouth as we don't believe ourselves worthy to receive it. Only consecrated hands should touch him. Now, I taught my children in Novus Ordo Masses to receive our Lord directly in the mouth, not to touch him. Now, I used to be a Eucharistic minister because the priest asked me. And I thought, if it's not me, it's going to be somebody else who will not give it any importance. I stopped doing that. I, I, resent, I presented my resignation. I do not want to touch anymore the body of our Lord Jesus Christ out of utter respect. No? But I do believe that the Novus Ordo Mass is valid. What is coming, this new liturgy that is coming, will be an utter abomination under, while being looked under every angle. Now, regarding, regarding um, Garabandal and what you said earlier, what happened in the 1960s that made these apparitions ever so important, remember, there is one particular message of Our Lady to the children of Garabandal that state they are taking away importance from the Holy Eucharist. She was talking in the present tense. That was Vatican II. Vatican II, all of a sudden, um, the priest was facing mostly the, uh, no longer the tabernacle, but was giving his back to the tabernacle while facing the people. So, error number one, you should never put anyone above God. Error number two, said, well, in the past, you were able to touch, uh, the apostles touched the Eucharist in the hands when Christ gave it to them. Yeah, but the apostles were the first princes of the Catholic Church. Peter was the first pope. They were the first consecrated leaders of the Catholic Church. Do not mix everything. No? Number two, number three, uh, we receive our Lord uh, on the trident in mass on our knees as opposed to standing up very proudly and saying i'm your equal by receiving him on our knees and i assure you it's not easy you, you humble yourself and you said my lord and my god we're talking about christ if he were there in a human form would you stand like this in front of him or would you place yourself on your knees contradiction again receiving him in the hands and in the mouth in one particular apparition site that I studied with Father Laurentin, the Virgin Mary gave a message where she said, I ac my son accepts his being received on the hand because it has been approved by his uh, 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 vicar, vi um, by his um, representatives, by the Catholic Church on earth. However, I tell you that it is better to receive him directly in the mouth and if you can, and if you can, on your knees. So it is accepted, it is tolerated. Uh, but again, and we could go on and on with conversations. I have never understood why people insist on wanting to receive it in the hands. Where do they get out of it? There is you increase the chances of an accident for the Eucharist to fall on the floor, as opposed to receiving him directly in the mouth. It, you only expose him to one part of your person. With the hands, you expose him to two. The hand and the mouth, with a chance that in between the Eucharist could fall. What's more, let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, that you were to receive the Eucharist in the hand. You know how easy it is to substitute it and how many uh, satanic uh, organizations employ young men to go to Mass and steal the Holy Eucharist for, to perform Black Masses? Look how easy it is to, to perform, right? It is here. Never been there in the first place. It's been here. So you can receive him making it appear that you put him in the mouth when all the time it was here. That's how easy you can steal a Holy Eucharist 
and sell it to one of those blooming Manitous who will no do God knows what with this holy sacrament of the altar. I am sorry, I do not want to collaborate in something that is less than uh, on honoring our Lord Jesus Christ. But the people who argue sometimes are so proud that out of sheer pride they will not accept or even consider that they are wrong. And that is a sin in itself. Yeah, Humility yeah. is the cornerstone in the messages that the Virgin Mary accept. Disappear, make do what St. John the Baptist said. Di diminish so that he increases. That's all that matters. Amen. I'm sorry, again, I've taken too much time, but I do enjoy... No, oh, I love years. every bit, and I agree with everything you say. There's not a one thing I don't agree with. Uh, I'm the same with communion on the tongue for the exact same reasons. I, I find it most humbling to be on my knees receiving on the tongue. It makes Christ feel more grand just in that humble act of mine compared to taking it. And during COVID as well, do you know, the, the, the priest was trying his best for those to receive in the hand, those who still wished in the tongue, and they kept us separate. But then people started complaining to the bishop, and he's like, I can do it after mass for you. And Oh, that's another story. I mean, it just shows you that the grain, the harvest is at the point where the wheat and the and the, the grain, I forget the words, I'm not a farmer, but you know, the darnel and the wheat, you can really see both sprouting now. You've got one and two, and you, I really see it more now than ever in my life. And I think this year just might bring a few things about in the church without even thinking about the world. But as always, I see those parallels running together. We've covered a lot and hopefully something unique as well. I know you've been busy with other channels and those channels I would love to get on myself. So please let them know. Um, I will let them know, laddie. You can be sure. <laughs> and you're a very good chap. And uh, I con I'm congratulating myself to call myself your friend. I will uh, try to set it up for I would love you to appear elsewhere and yeah. especially you're brilliant and you're very knowledgeable and uh, Let know that I'm not just someone there that likes to just talk about things I have studied it for years before seminary during Shows. seminary saw the signs in the Vatican while I was there watching Francis coming out on the balcony do you know I actually came out on the balcony exactly 13 minutes past 8 in the evening it was the Orthodox priest that told me to look at that and he showed me the photos of the live feed and I was there in the Vatican Square. So the time at the Vatican was 2013 and the year 2013 <laughs> on the 13th day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say nothing more just so I, I know we didn't begin with a prayer, which was my fault, I forgot, but would you like to finish us off with a short prayer? Of course, I'd be delighted. How about the Saint Michael, the Archangel, an exorcist prayer? Okay. Lovely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you, thank you really you. are uh, mon bon ami and... Uh, Please invite me again. I enjoy your show immensely. It's, you are one of my favorite ones. Uh, I hope you don't say that to everyone because I take that. No. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and for everyone watching, please, you know what to do. Get your comments in. Let's keep them respectful, especially as a faith-based channel. Let's grow in community. Let's grow in grace. Spread it far and wide while we can by hitting the share button. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, give it a like, thumbs up, do everything to get this video, these messages out there while we can to as many souls as we can. Until next time, take care and God bless.